Hi, this is Dan Malloy continuing with GMAT Quant. If k greater than 1, which of the following must be equal to 2 over square root of k plus 1 plus square root of k minus 1? So when we look at the answer choices, we see there are variables in the answer choices. So one method of doing this would be to just choose a number for k and plug it in and see which one works out to be equal. And that's not a bad strategy. Um, the danger, the, the reason you'd want to look at that strategy is because there's a danger in getting bogged down in algebra and wasting a lot of time uh, when plugging numbers might just be faster. In this particular example, I think it turns out if you see uh, the method, then it's actually pretty quick to do it algebraically. So I'm going to suggest that we do that, and that's how I'll solve it here. But I'm totally open to you choosing numbers as an alternative strategy for this problem if that's your preference. Um, certainly see if you can learn both ways and try to compare for all the examples that you work through which approach is going to be better so that you get a feel for when you're getting bogged down and you should bail out and go back to guessing numbers and when guessing numbers is actually really inefficient and you're better off just learning the algebraic techniques that you maybe forgot or need to brush up on or need to improve your ability to recognize um, so that you can be faster. So f for this guy, you want to realize that this denominator here can be cleaned up a lot by multiplying by the conjugate. So if you don't remember that technique, then do some Googling about conjugates. But the basic idea is if you have like, um, I don't know, a number, we'll call it a over x minus y, you can clean that up. You can clean up that denominator by multiplying by x plus y over x plus y. So the conjugate is the same binomial as what already exists in the denominator, except with the opposite sign. So x minus y becomes x plus y. Or if it's x plus y, it becomes x minus y. It's the same binomial with the opposite sign in the middle. And you're multiplying by the conjugate in both the numerator and the denominator because anything over itself is 1. That's what allows you to do this. All you're really doing is multiplying by 1. But in doing so, you're changing the way that uh, fraction is presented. And hopefully we can get it to look like one of these answer choices. So what is the conjugate of this denominator? Well, it's the exact same binomial, except with a minus sign in between. So let's rewrite the problem here. So it's the square root of k plus 1 plus the square root of k minus 1. And we have to multiply by the conjugate of that. So the conjugate of that is k plus 1 square root minus k minus 1 square root over the exact same thing, k plus 1 square root minus k minus 1 square root. Okay, so these are binomials. So when we multiply by that, in the numerator we have to distribute the 2, or not. I'm actually going to leave it outside without multiplying it inside. So 2 times k plus 1 minus square root k minus 1. And in the denominator we have the product of two binomials, so we actually have to FOIL. But the beauty of the conjugate is that the middle terms cancel out. So let's just go back to this example over here of x plus y times x minus y. If you do this, you get x squared plus xy uh, minus xy minus xy. Apologize for the handwriting there. Minus y squared. So you end up with plus xy minus xy and the middle terms cancel out. This always happens when multiplying by the conjugate. That's why we use it. So you end up with x squared minus y squared, which is a lot cleaner than what you would have otherwise had. So in this case, we can ignore the middle term. All we have to do is multiply. So in FOIL, it's first, outer, inner, last. We only have to do first and last. We don't have to do the, uh, the inner and the outer, because we know the inner and outer, the middle terms, are the ones that go away. So we only have to do first and last. So the first is root k plus 1 plus root k times root k plus 1. Well, the square root of anything times the square root of the same thing is 
the thing inside, right? It's, it's not um, being square rooted anymore. So that's just k plus 1. And the last is the same situation. Square root of k minus 1 times square root of k minus 1 is k minus 1, and it's being subtracted. So minus k minus 1. Now I don't want to rewrite this again, so I'm just going to work on the denominator. If you have k minus k, that's nothing. And if you have 1 minus negative 1, you have 1 plus 1, which is 2. So this whole denominator just becomes 2. And that 2 cancels with the 2 in the numerator, and you're left with this, k plus 1 minus root k minus 1, which is choice E. So if you remember the conjugate, the algebra is not too hard. And you can really quickly check that by just plugging in a number, and you'll see that it works out just right.